Hey Pash fam, it's Elizabeth Williamsburg of ERWplans.com and Elizabeth Williamsburg Planner Concepts. Today I'm going to show you how you can use the weekly reflection that Passion Planner just launched in your Passion Planner. Um, there's probably a bunch of different ways that you can use this, but what I'm going to show you is just the quick and easy way I figured out to use this. So first things first, I printed one week of weekly reflections on some sticker paper. And then I printed three more back and front, long side binding um, on regular paper. A couple of quick notes. I found that the template from the Passion Planner website actually was a little too big to go on the page. Um, there was like just, it overlapped off the page. It still does a little bit. Um, so what I'm recommending is that you trim it down when you cut it to um, trim it about a quarter of an inch inside the line. Like they give you lines to cut it around. Um, I would rec I'm recommending cutting it inside those lines about a quarter of an inch just to make sure it fits on your page um, and you only have to cut off a little bit around the rounded edges. So I printed these on some Avery sticker paper you can get pretty much anywhere. Um, there's a link in the description to Amazon to get some um, if you don't have like a Staples or an Office Depot, Office Max kind of thing near you. But Avery sticker paper, I like it because it's replaceable. You can pull it up and replace it maybe five or ten times before it starts losing stickiness. And I've had some of this paper in um, my passion planner from last year and it's still sticking. So you've got, it's good, good stickiness, good stick to uh, One thing with the three additional sheets that I printed on regular paper, as I mentioned, there's this line here that goes all around that I said cut about a quarter of an inch into. I didn't cut a quarter of an inch on one side. In this case, it's the right side of the number one page. I'm going to show you why. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and bind them into our planner. So I'm actually going to fold the pages right along the edge of where you see the um, writing, the writing lines. So there's probably a real word for those, but I'm gonna just call them right, the lines to write on, the writing lines. So Fold it right along that edge there. I'm just using my nail to crease it. So it looks like that. On the front page side, the front first page is what was your favorite moment this week. Front page is gonna look like this. This is bent down. Okay. I'm gonna fold it back on itself and not double crease it. Okay. Get these extras out of here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it again on the line. Now I also have a bone scoring tool that I use sometimes for, and that's it made exactly for this kind of purpose to score these things without potentially ripping the paper like a long fingernail might do. But honestly it's seven o'clock in the morning. I don't want to get my bone scorer tool out at seven o'clock in the morning. I'm just not feeling it. So I'm just gonna use my nails. Okay. So now our planner Looks like this. And if you've seen my Dutch door or adding additional writing space videos, you know exactly what we're doing here. I've got these two folds here, one here, one here. Okay. And then fold back in on itself. Like so. So what you end up with on the page two, which is the page that starts one moment where someone helped you is you're going to have it double folded. We've got this fold here and the second fold here and it's all folded in on itself. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our tape. Um, I'm starting with the Tombow Mono Permanent Adhesive. There's a link also in the description for this. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to glue this. Now I usually go like this to get as much stickiness as possible because I don't leave a lot of room. But something else that you can do if you have scrap paper or the back of some sticker sheets like this, all right, we're going to get a little crafty here. It's just You can roll it down like usual and make sure the back of your sticker sheet is taking that little bit of excess glue edge. You can see there, there's a little tiny bit of excess glue edge because the glue roller is wider than this. 
Anyway, so page, page one is going to go on the right hand side face down. I'm going to fold it again and we're going to stick it right into the crease. Make sure that that dotted line is what's getting pushed into the crease. Like so. I'll push down the other edge. We've installed one flippy page. All right. This is where I might take my washi tape and tape it down. Or if I had it break, if you know, if I push through with my nail, that's something else I would do. That would be someplace else where you could use the washi tape to kind of reinforce it. So I happen to have my stationary cart just off camera here. So I did grab my bone scorer tool so you can see what I'm talking about here. And my silhouette spatula tool, which I use to put stickers into my planner, but we can also use it for putting in extra pages. We've got two more extra pages to go. For the next one, I'm gonna follow pretty much the exact same procedure as we did here. Fold it in right on that line. And I want you to be more worried about the writing on the, the opposite side than you're worried about this side, because as you see, this side opens up so you can see it. The other side, however, is bent, so anything that's covered up there, you're not gonna see. So if you need those writing lines, make sure that you're not bending too much. So, got that. Just gonna use the bone scorer tool. Go right like that. Okay. Bend it in again. Well, first we'll flex it open. Once we flexed it open so it bends, we're gonna bend it in again on the dotted line this time, or as close to the dotted line as we can. I like to use the dotted line because it gives me kind of a guideline. Now you could do all three pages here with just the permanent adhesive. And everything would be just fine like that. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna actually use some Elmer's glue here in a second to show you, you don't have to use, if you don't wanna go get some expensive permanent adhesive, you can also use Elmer's glue and washi tape. Um, and then the washi tape you can actually kind of pull up. It's just with the Elmer's glue, it takes a while to stick. The permanent adhesive is super sticky. But if you don't wanna use that, you don't wanna spend the money on it, that's fine. I get it, it's stuff that's expensive. I'm gonna take my Elmer's glue. Make sure you're getting it in the crease on top on the top of the page you put in first, and kind of on that and up the side there. If you get it too much on this other side, you're gonna have problems when you go to fold it. Okay. Once again, we're bent in on our second fold. The crease for our second fold, which is that dotted line, remember, goes in push down into the Elmer's glue, like so. Then I can use my spatula tool to really kind of jam it in and smooth it out. And I'm way less worried about this other side being messy. And that'll actually scrape off the excess glue as well. So that makes things nice, neat. Just don't push down too much. Get the excess off. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, because if I flip this over with this Elmer's glue over here, it's gonna stick to the page. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put down page one as my sticker. That will also cover over that little overlap there and help all the stickers bind together. Uh, nice thing about the Avery paper that I'm using here, in addition to it being replaceable, repositionable, which is really nice, is that it comes off in three pieces. So I'm just going to line this up with my cutout right in the crease so it's covering up all that glue. What you going to do with all that glue? Okay. And just slowly slide it down. 
And that's why we cut the extra, I'd say, I think I said it's quarter of an inch off each side. So that way it doesn't overlap. With the other quarter of an inch there, it came right to the edge of the paper. And that meant I was going to have to trim it up later, and I didn't want to do that. So you're going to, once again, go in here with your spatula tool to kind of push everything into the crease, get excess glue off. This is a spot where if you're really bothered by that dotted line, you can go in there with your white washi tape if you want to. Just kind of reinforce all of that binding you just did. If you want to, you don't have to. And like I said, it covers up that unsightly scoring line that we left by scoring in this. Grab some scissors. Try to trim it as close to the bottom as possible. Either spatula tool or so now all the glue is covered up. This is double bound, and we have two weekly reflection flippy pages. But we still have one more page, flippy page, to put in. All right, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except this time it's gonna go in on this side and bind down on this side. So we're gonna make a new crease in it, if that makes sense. So since we're going to be binding this side down, I'm gonna worry about what's on this side. This is where worrying about that text on the other side is real important. see any of the text when you flip this over then you've gone too far scoring tool just to kind of give that an edge there if you use a bone score like I'm using you'll see like a little bit of a shininess to the paper where you've scored it just as an FYI doesn't mean you did anything wrong it's just the nature of these bone scoring tools they make um, like a plastic one now that doesn't do that so that's kind of cool if that's something that's a concern for you Flip it in. I'm using an extra heavy or uh, heavier than usual paper. The copy paper you usually get, by the way, is probably about 20 pounds um, of weight. Um, it, it's right on the ream or the uh, carton of paper if you're doing a carton. Um, what the weight is, this is 24 pound paper, so it'll stand up a little bit more to the crazy shit I'm doing to it. Sorry, I'm gonna swear, I don't care. You are of the weak constitution. You cannot hear swears. Mm, this is not the channel for you, boo. All right. Coming in here. Remember back of my sticker paper I'm using to not get glue all over everything. Permanent adhesive. Going down the back here. I had a second of self-doubt there for a second. I was like, wait, what am I doing? Yep, I got this. Make sure that little fold is folded in. We're gonna make a new seam right here. That goes, it's gonna overlap a little bit on the old one. The other sheet, we're just gonna push it down. Push that new seam in. That doesn't sound right, does it? I have a dirty mind, ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna push that new seam right to your paper. Push that down. And then, because that don't look cute, washy over the dotted line. going to go ahead and finish up by putting our sticker down on the opposite side. See this one I didn't trim. This is what happens if you actually follow the trimming guidelines. You get that little bit of excess there that we're going to have to trim off. 
once I have that and I know that that's stickered in properly, I'm going to pull the backing off. Now if you don't have sticker paper and you don't want to go buy sticker paper, you can just use regular white paper and either your glue or your, mo uh, your mono adhesive uh, to kind of trim that up or trim that up, right, to sticker that down. So you can use like regular paper. You don't have to get fancy with the sticker paper. I just find sticker paper works better. This is how we're going to trim up this edge here where it's a little too long because I didn't trim this as far in. This is the first one I trimmed up and that's when I realized, oh crap, this isn't the exact, this isn't exactly right. Okay, so there we go. Uh, once again, if you want to just make sure that seam is extra reinforced, a little bit of whitewashy, down the seam. Just watch out, make sure you don't cover up any of your words, words are important here. And now, if you want to do your memory keeping, for each week instead of once a month. When you open up your monthly reflection, you have one, two, three, four weeks of monthly, ref re monthly reflection in your fashion planner. Once, just a bit of warning as you may, may or may not be able to see that gets quite chunky quite quickly. So, just a little word of warning to you. And that's how you're gonna add four into your passion planner. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, all of the things that I used in this video today are linked to in the comments. Um, you can buy them on amazon.com. Most of them you can also buy at your local paper or craft store. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.